So I am here with Ben and Danny from Simply for Life Woodstock, and you would have recently known them um, from the How to Eat Healthy During the Holidays mm -hmm. video that just came out. And today we're going to be talking about kids' nutrition, which is a massive topic, but it's important. Um, I work in a lot of schools. Usually middle schools, high schools have cafeterias. Most schools have a breakfast or lunch program. Um, lots of fruit, not really a lot of protein. So there's a lot of sugar get going into kids and sugar in kids is, raises the blood level, blood sugar, and then all of a sudden they crash, right? So it's not ideal. Um, but the challenge with parents, obviously, with kids is having parents make lunches and it's a lot of work. I mean, you're a parent, you know this. Um, you've done this. You have I've a couple of kids. So I've done this. You've gone through it and now as a consultant, Mm -hmm. I don't. Need, I can't remember your title. It's RHN. RHN. So it is a consultant. You're Registered. helping people make nutritional better choices consultant. and yeah. eat healthy and right. And but it's not just food. It's not just making the food choice. A lot of it is in our minds and it's right. emotional. And mm. how many of us emotionally eat once in a while? I think everyone does. When and I'm it's, happy, when I'm sad, and it's being okay with that. It happens. But right. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna have a conversation about kids' nutrition and some sure. tips that can help parents and. Sure your thoughts on that as well and we'll just kind of go through it but just from your perspective as a parent what are some of the challenges that face parents oh my word options at the grocery store yeah. is a huge one um kids preferences i mean you really have to have a palate for for healthy for healthy eating um yeah i uh i'm lucky my husband is a really big contributor of um being able to make lunches and yeah. we teach them young too you know, to be able to prepare their lunches. I think my daughter Rylan started in grade three, right. preparing her own lunch. Uh, in high school, the issue that we're dealing with now is that it's not cool to take your lunch to school. So, I mean, she's eating at DQ and her grandparents give her lunch money and her choices aren't what they should be. <laughs> As a nutritional consultant, I can say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, so there are definitely some challenges, um, but yeah, health is important super important to sustain them for the day i mean they're gone for what seven eight hours that's a long day and i mean if they're crashing from a sugar high then um so yeah what could help change that mindset though that bringing your lunch is not cool or it's bad I'm or i'm stumped i'm stumped but part of it is understanding that sometimes what's cool is not always the right thing to do mm. like i talk to kids sometimes and it's like just because a lot of people know about a certain hockey player. Does that mean they're cool? Um, you know, and does it actually matter what people think? What right. you do? Right. Sometimes, like when you know, when we were in school, Edwin jeans were the cool thing. <laughs> it's like a big patch on it. It's like, oh no, you're wearing Edwin. You're cool. Yeah. Does it actually matter? Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, what does cool mean? And I think mm. working around that sometimes helps. And really, I think the cool people are the ones that do what they like to do, do their thing. Right. But and what I want her to thing. be, I want her to be the leader in that, right? Because that's what I feel like I am. So I bought her a nice fancy new lunchbox. And it's a nice one. It's a 31 one. So I don't even know what that means. Okay, well, some people do. But she knows and she, she knows and, she and I know. And she, it matters. <laughs> so it it's a big deal. Yeah. But uh but yeah, she was even when she was in middle school picked on, I guess, for having quinoa in her in her lunch. Like, what are you eating? And healthy veggies and things like that. So the stigma around that needs to change. Um, but yeah, my, my crew, the little kids, they'll eat whatever we, we pack. Of course, they love granola bars and trying to find granola bars that are healthy is a challenge. Um, but yeah, we're working on that. Uh, my little guy loves carrot sticks, so he's kind of, he's easier. We've, we've trained him from the get-go. But it is weird because I've noticed kids that are athletic, it's uncool to be really athletic. It's uncool to be smart. It's uncool to eat healthy. Like, I don't know where this idea comes from that it's cool to like right? be a rebel or cool to like do whatever you want. And yeah, we're not there yet. I'm no. hoping that that... Well, I think but I'm... even when we were young, that was the, the stigma. That was the yeah. notion, right? We have hockey so... class now. You know this, right? Hockey class? Hockey class. Ryland does five mornings a week in the arena. I drop her off, you know, yeah. 7, 45, 7, 30, the latest. So before school. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she, and it's so important. She needs the protein. Absolutely. She needs that. Yeah. So we have rules in the morning. If you want to take your phone to school, you got to have your chores done in the morning and you have to have breakfast. And if you don't have lunch money, you got to make a lunch. A lot of so, it's just habits, I think, getting them yeah. to that because when they move out, like, yeah. we know that living, living on it's like, yeah. what do we, I can eat anything I want. And right. sometimes it's easy to do that. Right. I don't know if you have food delivery here yet, like Uber Eats or something. Like in Calgary, we have Uber Eats and you can just 
sit there and be like, not yet. Oh, cool. Someone just delivered food to my door. I don't even have to go anywhere. Oh, wow. But no, we don't have... Even... I know that there's like good food. My parents ordered good food. Right. And HelloFresh. Yeah. And then it just shows up and you can cook the food. Yeah. And it's really I think that's about. brilliant. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, yeah. We do have really great breakfast programs in Woodstock. So the kids are, are definitely fed in the morning. And Woodstock High School just added a, an entire room dedicated to healthy foods. They have a fridge in there. I yeah. think it was even donated by McClellan's. Cool. Yeah. That's good. So they have... Lots of veggies. You can get the community fruit. involved because yeah. there's a lot of um, small towns. It's a towns wellness network where, too. Yeah, a lot of small towns where the local organizations will donate yeah. food and things mm-hmm. like that, which helps. Yeah, so it keeps they keep it stocked. And, and she told me the other day that she went and ate an orange and I high fived her. I thought that was awesome. Keep eating. And it's just, just consistent because it is a lot of thinking. It's like you think about what you wear, you think about what you eat. Mm. But food is something all the time. Right. I do a lot of fasting actually because I have think less now it's like oh I don't really want to eat today cool I mean ketosis it's fine and bring fat then I have my one meal but there's some people that eat those six meals and they right. plan out every Sunday they spend five hours meal planning and yeah it's crazy you got to kind of figure out what works for you I think but yeah. just know when you're making those food choices right. and kids are not I don't think kids are ever too young to teach them that stuff oh definitely not I mean, from the time that they could start eating, my kids were first eating um, like yolks of yeah. eggs, avocados, things like that. Now you get a little taste of sugar, yeah. right? And, yeah. and they're getting picky. That's I don't want challenge. that. Yeah, everything tastes so good. They did a yeah. study where they put um, marketing on fruits and the fruits sold way better because it would say like on apples, like, you know, helps reduce whatever and mm. like low in, low in whatever, whatever. And our grocery store started uh, giving out, I don't know, they just have free food so when you go grocery shopping you can have a banana or you can have an yeah. apple or, yeah. so I thought that was really cool too uh, to see more of an effort from from grocery stores to promote healthy eating when a lot of gluten-free food is not that healthy right? no. it's like just snacks yeah so people think oh I'm eating snacks but they're gluten-free so they're healthy for me and it's like, yeah that's not really how it works but anyway. and you work with a lot of adults mostly but that translates and trickles down to their kids as well right so do you ever have kids come in We've had a few uh, like high school students. Usually they're athletes yeah. that want to get better. I think they're playing for the Slammers or just yeah. a few people that want to be up their game or figure out how they can be better in their sport or be better in their field. Um, but there's been a couple, yeah, a couple of high school students that have either come with family or have come to specifically lose or lose weight or understand. And that's what the biggest thing is, is learning your physiology yeah. and what works for you because – everybody has a different physiology. Everybody's going to react differently to different things. And I remember in, in high school playing basketball, you could tell a difference in the second half between the team that had orange slices (laughs) at halftime and the team that didn't, because you'd get that, that boost of energy from those good sugars as opposed to not necessarily having anything or going out in the evening time and then having a big pizza party and then trying to go back to the tournament the next day and you're just carb heavy and you're overloaded and you could feel the difference and that was when I really my parents owned the business then so I really started to notice like oh this means something this isn't just something that you can practice a little bit or lose weight for a little bit and then go back to something else and we all make decisions and make different choices so I love Lucky Charms I'm gonna have Lucky Charms every once in a while (laughs) but like you don't need to have it all of the time Mm -hmm. and if you have it every morning for breakfast and then you wonder a month down the road why you feel like garbage it's because you've had lucky not not picking on lucky charms but you if you're eating poorly all of the time you feel bad Mm -hmm. and i recently listened to a podcast uh, a gentleman speaking about the difference between good and bad calories there's really no such thing like calories is a unit of measurement so it's understanding that there is more nutritious or less nutritious foods so being able to have an apple as opposed to a chocolate bar you can get the same number of calories or the same unit of measurement or the same uh the same energy for lack of a better term from it but you won't get the other nutrients that are coming from an apple you'll get the same sugar potentially but you won't get as much nutrients and you won't get as much nutrition from it it won't help your body so it's nice to hear that the school is actually trying to promote that. And that's really hard because that can be a financially difficult thing to do for businesses and for businesses to invest in the next generation is huge. 
there's a quote that um, that I saw recently, and it was it said, if uh, if you didn't come from a healthy family, make sure a healthy family comes from you, nice. and that really resonated with yeah. me. So yeah, just elaborating on you know making great choices is just yeah, it starts with us. So making sure that we're you know eating well and and yeah that um, our kids are seeing us yeah. eat well, healthy snacking that's really important. Um, mornings a- are rushed too, so. And there can be such a stigma against healthy eating for some reason. I remember, uh, again, when I was in high school, my parents owned the business. There'd be clients that would be either working in the school or teachers, and they would say, oh, don't tell your parents. Or I'd see them in the supermarket, and they'd be like, don't tell your parents I'm eating this. It's like, I don't care. I don't know you. But it's like, why would I care? You should care because you're not going to feel good. And I know that because you're eating whatever, but it was something that I found even weird that full grown adults didn't grasp the idea mm-hmm. that we're almost shamed sometimes. And yeah. I've actually bought, I'm bad for snacking and I know it. And I bought ice cream and chips and whatever. And then I'll eat half the ice cream and be like, Ugh, and then throw it out. Yeah. You know, or I'll buy like pop and throw it out. And I've even done this. I'm you know, embarrassed to admit it, but I've even done it where I've, Thrown it out. It's in the garbage bag on my counter. I haven't thrown it to the garbage. The next day, I'm like craving it. So I'm like, I'll go finish it. And I've done that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm not the only one that does this, but it's also like the stress of not going out and buying that fast food. I think is worse than just going to do it, right? right? Because you could be an amazing eater, exercise, but have really high stress. It doesn't really matter. So I think it's balancing those systems. Michael Pollan talks about this in his book, In Defense of Food. You're talking about apples. And he said, apples today, you would have to eat like five apples to get the same yeah. nutri- nutritious value, the same nutrients from like 50 years ago. Isn't that crazy? That yeah. just seems and so. It's so... Like, that's why juicing is good because you can put a ton of you know, apples and get all the nutrients. And that's why we started uh, with Simply for Life having the market too. Because as you start to eat better food, you'll notice the quality difference. Especially, yeah. we don't have a lot of produce here, but we have meats. And to be able to... to supply higher quality meats we just ordered a half cow at home from a local butcher or from local farmer and you can notice the difference in taste and quality of meat between that and stuff you buy at a supermarket like supermarket meat will make me sick ground beef will upset my stomach whereas the half cow we bought oh it tastes fantastic like there's so much more taste in that the same thing if you're looking at like not to knock on gmo foods but they've done a lot of things in the last two decades, three decades, but you look at wild strawberries and wild strawberries are like this big, but strawberries now you find them in the field and they can be the size of an apple. So I don't, uh, and putting the same nutrient content in something that big. Franken food. Yeah. It's not, it's not as good like broccoli, or not. What broccoli used to look like, like 60 years ago compared to today. There's been a lot of things. I know it saved a lot of lives, but it's also, mm-hmm. what does it actually do in our body? Like, mm-hmm. you know, well, and my brother too, my brother's a chef and there's a reason that chefs choose high quality ingredients because they taste better local farmers or organic farmers uh, that actually take care of their crops have better quality ingredients and you can take a green pepper that doesn't necessarily look as good it's not as cosmetically pretty but it will taste so much better there'll be so much more flavor and so much more ability to use it in cooking as opposed to a lot of people think that good eating doesn't taste good and it doesn't have to good eating can taste good if you're using the proper ingredients and then you learn how to cook i find that's something that when i was growing up mom would cook good food that tasted like garbage (laughs) and it was just something she hadn't learned how to spice it how to cook things and she liked it and that was fine but i didn't and the more that i've learned about cooking and gastronomy that's something that you can blend flavors and you can make something taste really good that is good for you. Yeah. And it's not just because culturally we like sugars and we like salt and you can use those things. But if you are using other flavors like savory flavors, and I have a friend who went to Italy, she said they love everything that's really sour and bitter. And that's why they like wine yeah. and wine can be good for you. But again, if you're going for a lower quality wine or if you're going for a lower quality of food, you're going to be getting a different content, a different nutritional content. Well, if kids aren't taught that from the parents, then when they grow up and become parents, they don't know that. Yeah, so right. then it just keeps going. So like you said, it's, it does take effort, but anything worth having takes effort and is hard. Otherwise, they already be doing it. Um, my friend works with three and four-year-olds. It's uh, this program in Edmonton. They're just the cutest little things, just so tiny and like curious. And she always is about healthy snacking. And for the boys, she'll say, you know, if you eat these, you'll grow up to be big and strong. And they're like, oh, and then they'll eat it. And she said that too. There was a couple girls, and they're like, "But I don't want to be big and strong." And she's like, "Hmm." 
She's like, okay, if you eat this, your hair will become long and beautiful. They're like, oh, it will. And then they start eating it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like that. I mean, that may not work with like nine kids in grade nine and 10, 11. Like, you'll have great hair. They're like, no, no, no. Like, I don't believe you. Like, you're trying to trick me, right? Like, I could change my conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's like just how to frame it in a way that they think is awesome, right? So, because right. a lot of times with nutrition, we don't know the effects it has until 40 years later. Yeah. It's not like you eat something unhealthy and then you gain 10 pounds. It's just a slow and all of a sudden, like, oh, I just gained 100 pounds. Like, what happened to me? And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's the opposite, too. So it's not you just start going to the gym and you're like, all right, I'm jacked now. Yeah. Or you start eating healthy and then you feel great. Yeah. It's going to take time because your body is detoxing, again, for lack of a better term, right. out of those improper habits. And go, like going into keto, going into ketosis, you can go through a keto flu and your body is changing its metabolism completely. Yeah. So being able to focus on nutritious foods is huge for the next generation because obesity and just malnutrition in general has become an epidemic that we talked about for a little bit. I remember like five, 10 years ago, it was all over the news and everybody talked about it, but it seems to have gone by the wayside, but it's still an issue yeah. that needs to be addressed in schools and in, yeah. in Canada. Like yeah. we're eating, but we're not nourishing. Yeah. Empty calories. And just... it's a lot. And, and it's not about making people feel bad. It's just trying to provide support, you know, and giving, just being grateful for what we have, just loving our lives and trying to and a lack of education yeah. i mean the wellness network in woodstock does amazing things yeah. um also shout out to uh, i was gonna say simply for life but uh strawberry hill farms we yeah. have an organic farm locally we didn't have well i don't know how long they've been around 10 years maybe yeah about i worked for tim when i was in a, or just out of university okay yeah, yeah. So. so we have a lot of great resources yeah. now yeah. that we didn't have 10 years ago for instance um and then yeah us Come see us. We can give you all the well, nutritional and you advice. Get, you get the habits and kids and adults. The amount of money we're spending, we call it sick care, right? It's a sick care system. Right. We're not really helping a lot of people get better. But if people just help themselves get better, it would be incredible how much how many things could change, yeah. right? Less sick days. Right. Just so many things, right? And I interviewed a gentleman recently that spoke about how our medical system is more geared towards band-aids. Yeah. So it's to help with, you got a broken leg? Absolutely. You got a gunshot? We can help you. But for chronic conditions yeah. that have resulted from years and years of yeah. abusing your body, yeah. it can be difficult to fix that with totally. seeing your doctor in 15 minutes. Yeah. And if you're not being conscious of what you are eating, then you are not doing yourself a service. I remember I had a friend who had a liver transplant. He was on his third liver transplant. It just wouldn't take. And his doctor said, do not change your eating habits. And because he was at, he was in Halifax, so he was at the big hospital in Halifax for the transplant, he was eating out every single meal. And I would go to, and I started bringing food from here. Like I drive all the way to Halifax from Woodstock because I knew he needed good food yeah, because he was eating out. And he was like, but the doctor told me not to change my diet. And I was like, that's a fallacy. I understand they want to control and they want to see what is going to help if the medications yeah. are helping. Yeah. But if you're eating better, your body is going to be able to fight that. Totally, totally. One thing too, so I talk about a lot about getting unplugged in school. So I don't think tech detoxing works. Going without a screen for a week doesn't work. That's not realistic. It's setting better habits. And one of the three habits I challenge kids to do is no screens at the dinner table. Um, a lot of people, Simon Sinek talks about this. One of the best things that you can do is with your kids have a dinner three times a week, four times a week. Yep. Um, and a lot of families may not have that luxury, but if you can make that happen, screen-free dinner, actually talk to each other. Yeah, we, So I we think a lot of the eating comes from a lot of people being lonely and disconnected. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing this now, you know, I'm on my phone a lot, my computer a lot, and it's, you have to put it down, put it away, go spend time with people. We're sitting in rooms with the people we care about, everyone's on their phone. It goes back to, you know, being at, at holiday time, focusing on mm -hmm. people. Because yeah. I think if that happens where you're kind of lonely, then what do you do? You may turn to food and... Right. So and sedentary. Yeah. The sedentary lifestyle yeah. that people are living now. Yeah. You know, eating food that's void of nutrients. Yeah. Right? And low, I always say focus density. on what we want. So right. if we want to eat healthier, then what are the steps that need, you know, go to the grocery store. You know, make a plan to go to the grocery store. Meet your local Schedule farmer. There, so, yeah. Talk to people. You know, ask. And I think like one or... habit, if you can just shift one habit. Um, mm -hmm. The book is called... Uh, Oh, it's about, I can't remember, but it's an amazing book. And they say to pick the keystone habit. So if you want to okay. run a marathon, well, what's that going to involve? You exercise and go to bed, eating healthier. So it can have a major impact on everything. So I think that's important too, is to kind of say, like, what do I want my life to be like? If I want to be a professional speaker, 
start doing the things that a professional speaker do and someday you'll become a professional speaker. Yeah. Like if you want to be a nutritional consultant, start doing things now and then you'll become that, right? Like right. a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, go do it. Like what are those first steps? Bro? Yeah. Because 10 years from now, you'll still be like, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, you mm. can. And it might be scary in the beginning, but change is always a little uncertain, right? So. Right. And that comes, you know, into play with nutrition too. A lot of people are scared to get on this path. Um, Just unsure. It's hard. It is hard. It is hard to eat well. Um, But it's a conscious choice. You have to make every single day, every meal. And I mean, yeah, you can, holidays, easy to fall off. And, but yeah, just. You like Seinfeld? So there's a bit about being at the grocery store. And he's like, everyone just know, no one knows what they're doing there. And he's like, (laughs) oh, there's a lot of mosquito. Is that, is that a mosquito? Like, is that good? I don't know. But he's like, there's no windows. He's like, there's no clocks. People are just going up and down the aisles. No one knows what they're, they're doing. They're like a casino. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of it's at the grocery store. Like, you get there with a the plan, maybe, and then you're like, oh. I was, um, I was at my friend's place recently, and they were actually ordering their food online. Um, Superstar, I think, does it. Mm-hmm. So she orders all of her food, pays for it, shows up at the Superstore, and it's right there. So she's not going to go to the store and buy a bunch of stuff right. as she walks around. Yeah. That's, that's good. Kind of, that's a good idea. I think so it is too. I like that. That would have been helpful about five years ago when I was, I had two kids, <laughs> two and under, and I couldn't get to the grocery store. So that's when Colin started doing the yeah. grocery shopping. Yeah. So, but that's becoming that. a popular option. Yeah. I mean, it costs like three bucks. Mm-hmm. I would easily pay $3. Time. Oh, it's beautiful. Brilliant. Good well, marketing. Supermarkets store. have been built with the psychology in mind that you put the things you need. So yeah. the bread and the milk are at totally. the back. Totally. So you have to walk through all of the. Yeah other aisles to yeah. see all of the snacks and you're like, Oh yeah, I'll just pick up some, I'll yeah. just pick up some. And that's what's nice about what we do is when you don't know what to do with regards to nutrition is you can have the accountability and be like, I'm not losing weight or I don't feel good. What's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And through our experience or like Danny's training and my training, you learn and through seeing other people, you're like, okay, this worked for somebody else. Yeah. Let's see what we can do for you or we can change something up or yeah. what doctors like to do is they'll just nix uh, dairy and gluten and you'll just cut a few things out and then see what works. Yeah. Where when we know a lot of the time what works for our clients and we've yeah. seen enough people, we've seen yeah. hundreds if not thousands of people over the years. So to be able to, okay, I have this reference point to show you where to go as opposed to trying it on your own or these fast fad diets that you just bounce up and down then you still feel like garbage you're not living a nutritious lifestyle it starts with us yeah like you said we're going full circle here it starts with us to be able to teach our children yeah you know how important nutrition is yeah and by teaching people that's how we learn i think as well so if people don't have kids I mean, still do it for yourself, but if you have kids, you have a real incentive today to Mm -hmm. do that. Right. And it doesn't matter if, you know, they're five years old or 10 years old. It's never too late. Right. And you can always change. You can always learn. I mean, you've seen a lot of clients that are finally getting healthier, finally taking the steps. Yeah, it's never too late. That's right. It's never too late. So, yeah. Good point. I love that. Cool. Well, thanks for having me in. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, hopefully those are some tips that will help people. I mean, it's overwhelming, I think, but it's also because... It is, is so important. Right. I mean, there's so much information about everything, right? If we were to research how to buy the right pen, right? I spent a lot of time, and these are the best pens, by the way. But I spent a lot of time because I didn't like when my pens would bleed. This is awesome. I spent a couple hours researching that. I want a good pen. <laughs> um, nutrition is even more important, so of course, there's going to be a lot more about it. But yeah. um, no matter what we do, I think it's... And, and sometimes people feel like they don't have the time, and so hopefully this will help. There's a lot of information here, but like you said, it just starts with you and just... Right. Make some of those choices and right. start feeling better, looking better, spending more time with family, which is a good thing. So thanks, Rob. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. Thank you.